Last week we discussed where to publish your ebook. So naturally, the next step would be, of course, naturally to go to ebooks, e to print books, of course. It's easy for me to say. And it gets a little more dicey when wandering into the area of print books with more options than any author could ever possibly need. Knowing where to go can be sometimes overwhelming and even confusing. We're going to go into a bit of a deep dive in some of the areas I've explored and some others have explored and some for you to consider to explore as well. Hey, just a big quick heads up. Over the past couple of months, our sponsor Miblart has contributed two stellar cover designs and are now looking to give away their formatting and layout design package worth up to $460. You can enter for your chance to win at dailinks.com, dailinks.com, <laughs> say that again, Dale, dailinks.com slash giveaway. The deadline is August the 1st. And if you happen to be hearing this and it's like, oh gosh, it's past August the 1st, don't worry. If you missed out on that opportunity, because this is only the third part in a four part giveaway series culminating in the premium cover design package worth $700. So enter now, enter daily and share it with other authors that you think will appreciate it too. Also for premium graphic design for authors, use my preferred company in Miblart. Get 10% off when you use the coupon code of Dale 10 when you visit my affiliate link at dailinks.com slash Miblart. Not sure where my brain glitched for just a second there. I kept saying Dale Links, and for some reason it just wasn't clicking in my head. Uh, you know, uh, as we kind of go into today's broadcast here, there's a few tips when selecting where to publish your print books. The very first recommendation I'm going to give you, it's not mandatory, but it is certainly something worth considering, is get your own international standard book number, also known as the ISBN. For me, I really like to get my print book into as many virtual bookshelves as possible and physical bookstores if I can. Uh, and the best way to do that is to actually own my own ISBN. And it also prevents any type of overlap, if you will. And speaking of overlap, you want to make sure that you're avoiding any overlap. For instance, if you happen to be using a distributor like Ingram Spark, they reach 44,000 retailers online. Of course, I'm going to end up saying that again at some point, at least a few times. They also hit avenues like, say, Barnes & Noble Press. Now, if you were to go through Ingram Spark, you can't take that same ISBN and put it over to Barnes & Noble Press because Barnes & Noble Press is going to say, hey, look, Ingram's already distributing it. You're already up here. So just know that there's going to be some overlap. You want to do your own due diligence. And because I really like to try to keep these broadcasts as succinct as possible. I, I'm not going to go down each one of these little rabbit trails of, well, you can use this and then you can use this and you can use this and this. Just do your own due diligence based on some of the recommendations I give to you today. And I'm going to say this without any exception, always order a proof. Always, always. And if you're saying, hey, Dale, I'm cash strapped, save up the money. Save up the money and get yourself the proof. Um, honestly, there's so many authors out there that have published their books without ordering a single proof. And then when they finally discover there's some type of an issue or discrepancy as far as quality goes or how the layout actually looks, um, they're shocked. And they could have probably avoided a lot of that if they ordered the proof in advance. All right, so I'm going to mention about eight print-on-demand companies and ones to kind of consider. And I'm also going to give you a couple of honorable mentions. So that way, if you want to do your own due diligence for some of those platforms, you can check it out for yourself. Now, I'm just going to get it started out with, of course, the one that we always hit. It's going to be Amazon Kindle Direct Publishing. Now, they have only two types of books that you can distribute through them. That's paperback and hardcover. For paperback, there are 16 trim sizes. Now, for hardcover, just recently came into beta, if you will, over the past year or so. And they only have five trim sizes. I anticipate seeing that increase in due time as they kind of get used to print fulfillment. Um, and in my opinion, I've actually ordered a couple of hard covers from them before, and I feel like the print quality is a little rushed because there is just some issues I've seen with their hardcover print designs. Now, uh, in cream or white papers, which you can make, make it available through, also you can get standard color or premium color. Now, bear in mind, if you ever hear me say standard or premium of anything, standard typically is going to be your bargain basement cost, whereas premium is going to be a bit more expensive. You don't saddle that burden. 
that base print cost is covered by the actual reader, the customer who purchases that book. So you don't ever have to worry about that cost. Now, there are going to be some costs I'm going to mention for specific print on demand avenues you'll want to take note of because some of them do require some money. KDP, no money whatsoever. You can just upload however you wish. Now, the reach includes 12 regions on Amazon with paperback and 10 regions on Amazon with hardcover. Now there is two distinctions between the paperback and the hardcover right now, and that's that you can get expanded distribution through paperback. Now expanded distribution is fulfilled through Ingram Book Group. Some have said it's possibly Lightning Source that is fulfilling that. If that is the case, you have additional distribution. However, for expanded distribution, you're only getting US and UK. Thankfully, uh, one of our viewers actually had pointed this out some time ago. Back in the Create Space days, there was no limitation. You got all of the Ingram distribution, not just two of the regions, but for whatever reason, when it moved from Create Space over to KDP Print, we had lost some of those regions and all we had is US and UK. Now, I've got opinions when it comes to expanded distribution. To me, I think for how much they take out, uh, it almost makes sense just to go directly to Ingram. And I'm going to talk about that here in just a second through an avenue like Ingram Spark. Now, royalty wise, oh, and I didn't mention, I'm sorry, uh, expanded distribution does not go with hardcovers. Not right now, not yet. I anticipate in due time, especially since Ingram does distribute hardcover print options. So we'll see how that kind of plays out. Now, as far as the royalty goes, it is 60% minus print fees. In fact, you're going to hear me say minus print fees every every single time because depending on the number of pages you have in your book, the standard color or the premium color if you happen to choose, all of that kind of calculates into how your print, your base print costs is going to be. And that's going to be taken away from whatever you're going to be able to profit from. So 60% minus print fees and expanded distribution is 40% minus print fees. Again, not a big fan of expanded distribution these days through KDP. Just go right to the source if you really want to get it. However, if you don't want to fool with all the extra friction, I totally understand if you just want to kind of keep it there and use expanded distribution for right now. Now, the pros for KDP is it's the most popular option. It's easy to find info about how to use it just about everywhere. I mean, shoot. You can even open up ChatGPT and get it to tell you exactly how to publish over in KDP or watch one of my previous broadcasts. That'd be very, very preferable for me. But uh, the cons for KDP is it's limited to the Amazon marketplace. Now, Amazon does get a fair share of the global publication profits. However, it doesn't get all of them. Now, I don't have any percentages or any of that data right now in front of me. We can all agree that they are the 10 ton gorilla in the room. So, um, going there exclusively, I think it's a bad move on your part, especially if you want to reach more readers. Go to KDP, great print stuff, especially their paperbacks. Always been happy with them. Now, the next area, number two, is going to be Ingram Spark. Now, I briefly teased about them. Now, let's go ahead and discuss them. Now, the types of books that they actually make available is probably the most of any platform, most, and I'm going to mention one of the platform that probably rivals them at this point. They have paperback, hardcover, hardcover with dust jacket. You get 29 trim sizes in paperback and 14 trim sizes in hardcover. And it comes in cream, white, or ground wood paper. Now, cream and white paper, we're all pretty familiar with. Whereas with ground wood paper, it's a little bit different. It's a cheaper paper. It's a little bit more pulpy, if you will. Uh, pretty good for smaller, like mass market um, trade paperbacks that, you know, uh, you know, it's just a little bit more... It's a little less expensive, so if it's it's an option you want to consider. Uh, there's also standard and premium color options, as there are in the other ones. Now, their reach is a little bit more ambiguous, and the reason is they reach over 44,000 online retailers and libraries by way of Ingram Book Group. Now, that's the parent company for Ingram Spark, and Ingram Book Group actually fulfills print distribution and fulfillment throughout a lot of print on demand. And actually you're gonna hear me say Ingram Book Group quite a bit. It's because they have such a massive reach. Now, as far as Ingram Spark goes, their royalty is flexible. 
you're able to determine that between 40 to 70 percent minus print fees however there's a little bit of an asterisk next to that because more recently earlier this year they'd actually done away with upload fees they used to charge 49 dollars to upload your manuscript and distribute it However, they don't do that anymore. Now all they do is take 1% distribution fee. So 1% of your retail price. So if it's you know, gonna be $20, it's going to be only you know, a couple bucks, that's it. So, or excuse me, 20 cents. I, my math's off today, I'm sorry, folks. Uh, uh, unlimited updates for the first 60 days with an asterisk next to that as well, because if you plan on making any updates beyond the first two months, uh, you're actually going to have to pay a $25 fee. However, because you pay attention to this podcast, I'm going to hook you up, of course, with a coupon code. Gives me nothing, just gives you everything, honestly. It's Dale2023. Um, that's going to be good for the entire year of 2023. You can get two update fees completely waived. Or do what I do. You can become a member of the Alliance of Independent Authors. There's many, many, many more perks in becoming a member of Ally. Go to dailylinks.com slash ally and you can either choose the author or the authorpreneur plans in order to get those coupon codes. Now, the pros when it comes to Ingram Spark, they've got the widest possible reach. It's huge. It's big. And my thought is you could go through KDP and choose expanded distribution, but you're sacrificing some of those earnings over to KDP. Whereas if you go over directly to Ingram Spark, there's a bit more flexibility over there as far as how much you can go ahead and earn. And you can change a lot of your metadata according to that platform, as opposed to something specific to Amazon KDP. Now, the cons of that distribution avenue, it's an all or nothing distribution plan. So there's no way to deselect retailers. Heck, they won't even give you a full list of those quote unquote 44,000 retailers. But across the board, a lot of companies that use Ingram Book Group just pretty much say the same thing. They agree, it's gonna be over 40,000 different retailers and online distributors, as well as libraries and such. Now, number three is going to be Lulu Press. Lulu Press actually has paperback, hardcover, and hardcover with dust jacket. Love their quality, by the way. They have 16 trim sizes with limitations on each for three of those sizes. So there's three of those options that are only available through like Lulu's actual distribution channel and not the wider reach. Now they have white or cream paper. They have something very unique. They have standard and premium black and white ink and they have standard and premium color. So that's pretty nice. If you're really looking to kind of snazz things up on your publication, there's those options. Now, as far as reach goes, they got Ingram. Ingram handles their global distribution. I think everybody can probably get, you know, pass the quiz at this point. It's over 40,000 different online retailers, distributors, and libraries. They also have the Lulu storefront, which is kind of nice, where you pretty much get most of your royalty through them, or you can get all of your royalties through the Shopify and WooCommerce integration by what's called Lulu Direct. Uh, Lulu D Direct is essentially just a way to cut out the middleman and all they do is fulfill the print runs and shipping. Now, royalty, they have a pretty good royalty uh, set up. It's 80% of net profits. Now, bear in mind the retailer takes their cut. Then Lulu takes 20% of the remaining money. The rest goes to you. So if you do make a sale through, say, the Lulu storefront, it's just an 80-20 split, which to me, I think that is the best royalty option of any of the options I'm going to mention today. Now, the pros includes the excellent royalties for sales made through Lulu Direct or the Lulu storefront. The cons, well, here's the one I didn't mention, which is you must order a proof copy to get global distribution. Eh, it sucks, but again, I say you should order a proof anyway. Number four, Barnes & Noble Press. Now, they have paperback, hardcover, and hardcover with dust jacket. They have over 20 trim sizes with white and cream paper in standard and premium color options. As far as the reach goes, this is the shortest reach of them all. In fact, I always debate whether I'm going to bring them onto this list, but because they have such a great process and excellent quality, I always bring them up anyways. Barnes & Noble only reaches U.S. for print distribution. That's it. 
I don't see them just, you know, expanding anytime soon, but if they do, I will let you know. Now the royalty is 55% minus print fees. Not bad, pretty comparable to the other ones that we've already mentioned. Now the pros, they've got great print quality. Um, but one thing you should notice is that Lightning Source does print fulfillment for Barnes & Noble Press. And you're probably saying that's all well and good, but what the heck does that have to do with anything? Lightning Source is a company underneath Ingram Book Group, which of course makes it the sister company to Ingram Spark. So you can see that, you know, with the pros is you get that huge wide reach with Lightning Source, but it's only in the US, which what gives? Why aren't we getting something beyond it if you're using Ingram Book Group to fulfill print runs? But I, I digress at this point. Now the cons is it's just limited to the US. To me, I think that if they can expand that reach, they're gonna be a really good viable competitor to these other ones. Now, speaking of viable competitors, number five is Book Vault because I've had a lot of people recommend that I check them out. And right now I'm in the middle of doing a full piece for them on my main channel. You can uh, take a look at that video if you go over and subscribe to dailylinks.com slash YouTube and get yourself subscribed on my main channel. But Book Vault offers paperback, hardcover, and hardcover with dust jacket with white and cream paper options. Um, I've heard nothing but stellar 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 quality when it comes to them some people are like it's the best they've seen and i've actually seen some people compare it to me over video chat and i'm like oh my gosh that really is very good as far as the reach goes they have amazon gardeners alibris and the great british bookshop note more recently that they actually got us distribution which was a huge victory Stay tuned to this channel because Book Vault actually has, I'm getting a little bit of inside intel from them. So if anything ever rolls out, I'm gonna tell you guys first. Now, as far as the royalty goes, it's pretty flexible. It's between 40 to 90% minus print fees. Now, as far as the pros goes, it's quality. Excellent, excellent quality. And I've hear, heard nothing but good things about their customer service. Like they're saying like, it's the best that you'll ever find. Now, as far as the cons goes, well, there actually is an upload fee of $23. Not too bad. I discussed with them in an interview, Alex Smith actually had interviewed here on this channel. You'll wanna go back and watch that interview. Really, really good. One of the reasons why they had that upload fee was to mitigate any type of people just looking to just spam the marketplace with a bunch of garbage publications. Um, so if you're not the type of person who's going to spam the marketplace with garbage publications, make sure you use the coupon code BVDALE to waive your next couple of uploads. That's B as in book, V as in vault, Dale, D-A-L-E, and use that. You can get the next couple of uploads taken care of. Next one's gonna be number six, Draft to Digital. Now Draft to Digital just more recently came out of print beta for paperback books. They have three trim sizes in white and cream paper. Now, as far as their reach goes, well, it's Ingram distribution. So of course it's going to reach, ready for it, over 40,000 different avenues. Now, as far as the royalty goes, it's a little lower than most on this list. It's 45% minus print fees. Now, I love Drafted Digital for so many, many, many reasons. Print is probably not the thing that I fell in love with them initially, but I will say one of the pros that they have with their platform is they have a free ebook to print book conversion tool. Even if you don't want to use their platform to distribute, you can actually go on there and use that. They've actually told me this before numerous times. They said, we don't want you to have to be beholden to our platform. We want you to use our platform if you want to use it and the tools are there for whenever you need it now the cons it's still relatively new feature they're actively working on to improve so there are some hiccups if there's some issues or problems you run into using print on draft to digital reach out to their customer support they are second to none unparalleled in my opinion now uh, number seven is publish drive now i chose publish drive this time around there's a little bit of an asterisk next to it i'm, I'm going to mention it here in the cons just a second here they have paperback and they also have 30 trim sizes. 30, three zero, good Lord, that's a lot. Now they reach Ingram, Amazon and China print. Now, yes, if you wanna get your print books over into China, that is one method you can do it. It's huge reach. Now, they give you a royalty, are you ready for this? 100% of net profits, meaning that any avenue that they sell through, those people are gonna take their cut of the money. And then the rest of that comes to you. 
they don't take anything. Publish Drive's like, no, we're good, except they have a monthly subscription fee. So yes, the pros can be that it, you're getting all your royalties, but the con is you have to pay a monthly subscription fee. This is good for authors that are a bit more established or have a rock solid marketing plan, but it's not so good for anybody that's looking to dabble into things and just kind of test out the waters of self-publishing. I really like Publish Drive's dashboard. It is phenomenal probably one of my favorite ones next to Kobo Writing Life, but Kobo Writing Life doesn't do print books, so here we are. But as far as Publish Drive goes, stay tuned to this channel. I've been playing with them a lot more here more recently, and I'm very happy with some of the stuff that I've had with them so far. Next one, number eight, is going to be StreetLib. They distribute paperback books. Now, they're a little bit more limited in their reach. It's strictly European distribution for now. They have seven different retailers in the EU. Now, will they continue to expand? Most likely, I even have uh, a good friend over in Street Lib that we can get more details about that as they roll out. Now, royalty, when it comes to them, is Street Lib retains 10% of the retail price. Notice it said 10% of the retail price and not 10% of the net profit. You get the rest of the net profits, meaning that anytime someone makes a sale, they're going to take their cut. It comes on back over towards your direction and then you get yours. So, um, pros, they have ebook, print book, and audiobook all in one account. I kind of like that. The cons, well, the reach is limited to Europe. Now, if you're just looking to reach Europe, that's fantastic. But if you're looking to reach worldwide, it's probably too soon to adopt Street Lib into your publishing plan. All right, honorable mentions. I want to bring up a couple of them because I know that we're getting a little short on time. Vervante is one to look into. In fact, go over, visit their website. V-E-R-V-A-N-T-E -E with the E with a little accent above it. That's Vervante. Go on there and actually they'll send you a catalog, 100% free for you to look at. Blur Books is another one. Now, the only reason why I didn't bring up Blur Books was I was relatively underwhelmed by them in a more recent series that I did. In fact, actually inside the show notes, I'm linking out to other videos where I covered some of the forms of print on demand through things like the paperback, as well as full color, premium uh, color and standard color options, a hardcover and then hardcover with dust jacket. So watch that full series because we do bring up blurb. Uh, they did nail it on hardcover with dust jacket in my opinion. Tableau is another one and Book Baby. Now Tableau, I think you have to pay an upload fee. Book Baby, you have to pay an upfront fee and they work similar to what um, Publish Drive does. Now, when all else fails, you can always look into offset printers, meaning that you can always find a local print shop that can fulfill that because you're going to get a lot better print quality when you go to an offset printer. Or you can go over to a couple of my trusted partners in pufferprint.com or printwithbookmark.com. I've had a couple of uh, clients as well as friends who have checked out Pufferprint and have been very, very happy with it so far. Uh, one last little message here, folks, before we start to wrap up today's podcast. This is the last call for the Midblar giveaway and to for your chance to win a stellar premium design cover, uh, design package when you visit dalelinks.com slash giveaway. Enter now, enter daily, and share with another author friend who might need it too. And don't forget, you actually have to confirm your entry. So make sure that when you do enter for the first time, you check your email inbox. If you see something from King Somo, that's me. King Sumo is one that runs the giveaway, so uh, I'm looking forward to it. Now, special thanks to our sponsors, Miblart, for their generous contributions. Big shout out. You guys are the best. Now, when it comes to print on demand here, folks, explore all the options and don't just settle on one avenue, especially if you're trying to reach more readers. But don't sacrifice quality for exposure. If you see a platform that can't deliver it the quality you expect for your books, skip them. doesn't matter what I say. If I say KDP is great and you look at it and say, this is trash, I don't like this, then don't go with them. It's not mandatory to distribute through a print-on-demand company if it doesn't align with your vis vision. For me, I lean on KDP and Ingram Spark, but going into the very near future, I'm looking into avenues like Book Vault so I can build my readership away from major online retailers. It was one thing I didn't mention, which is Book Vault actually integrates with Shopify and WooCommerce, much like Lulu does. Uh, you know, this way, when I do that type of integration, I get to keep more of the money and I get to keep my audience too. So that right there is the most important thing to me. 
Next week, we'll be celebrating the 200th podcast episode with a special guest interview with USA Today bestselling author, founder of author.email, the email marketing service specifically for authors, and the new vice president of author success at Drafted Digital, Nick Thacker. We'll be talking about the best practices and practical tips for launching a best-selling book. Now, the week after next, we'll wrap up our three-part series about where to publish your books when we discuss the world of audiobook publishing. Till then, this is Self-Publishing with Dale, and I'll chat with you very soon.